Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this is question number 12 from the International A Level at Excel June 2014 C34 paper. It's from before we, we had the new P3 and P4. This question actually is related more to P P4 type of questions. It's about volumes of revolution and parametric equations, but it does involve a lot of trig identities from P3. So there's quite a lot of stuff in here. So this question here um, has been requested by one of my students for me to answer. And um, this is question number 12. It says here, figure three shows a sketch of part of the curve C with parametric equations x equals tan t and y equals 2 sine squared t, where t is between 0 and pi over 2. The finite region S, shown shaded in figure 3, is bounded by the curve, by the line x equals root 3, and the x-axis. The shaded region is rotated through 2 pi about the x-axis to form a solid of revolution. We've got to first of all show that the volume of the solid of revolution formed is given by this equation here. Alright, so now when we are finding the volume of a solid of revolution, then basically what we have to do is we have to, to find that volume, we have to do pi times the integral of y squared with respect to x between the limits on the x-axis of the area that we want to, we want to rotate. All right, so that's what we should know um, how to, uh, you know, we should know how to find the volume of revolution using this equation. We need to know that. And we now have to apply this to the parametric equation that we're given, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But first, I'm going to show you why is this the volume of revolution of a solid or of a shaded region when it's rotated around the x-axis. So what does it mean by volume of revolution? It means that this two-dimensional flat graph is going to be rotated it's like it's going to come out of the page it's going to go wrap all the way around the x-axis to form a three-dimensional kind of kind of weird type of bell shape so basically this is going to go like all the way around it's kind of like drawing it going out of the page and then go back into the page and it's going to make like a three-dimensional type of bell type of shape right now how do we find the volume of this solid that's formed? Well, we split this up into some tiny little cylinders. Okay, so we take a small, tiny little width in X, or, you know, little width of X, which we call DX. It's so small that it can be modeled as a little rectangle. It's that thin. Okay, and that forms basically a little cylinder here. Okay, it's a cylinder, and that cylinder has a radius okay which is this distance here which is basically the y value of this x point the radius here is the y value of this x point okay now we know that the volume of a cylinder um is like a cylinder is like a prism it's a cross-sectional area which is pi r squared times how high or how deep that cylinder goes that's how you find the volume of a cylinder so the volume of this particular cylinder will be pi times the radius which is our y so that's y squared times how thick it is, which is dx. And what we do is we take all the little tiny cylinders from the beginning to the end of the shape, between the limits that we need, we take all of those and we add them together. So that will give us basically the integral between the limits of the beginning and the end of pi y squared with respect to x. This is the volume of one of those cylinders, and you're taking all of the small cylinders between the beginning and the end of our limits, and we're taking those volumes, adding them all together. So that's where this formula comes from. You can just write the pi on the outside of the integral because it's a constant. Okay, so that's the kind of basis behind this formula. We don't really need to understand that. If you didn't understand that, it's not a big problem, as long as you know that you have to use this formula to find the volume of revolution of a solid. So you take the equation of the curve, you square it, you multiply it by pi, and then you integrate with respect to x between those limits, and you get the volume of revolution. Now, when you're given a curve that's kind of given parametrically like we have here, 
then we have to deal with it in a slightly different way. So we have to think now in terms of, you know, dealing with this third parameter of T. So one of the things, just like in substitution, um, we can do to deal with that problem is we can ha now have these in terms of T, T1 and T2. These limits will have to be in terms of T. And I can write this as Y squared dx dt dt. This is actually the same thing as y squared with respect to x. All right, these would cancel out if you can think about it like that. But now we're going to have everything in terms of t. So the original limits that we had in terms of x in this question, these original limits was between 0 and pi over 3. You can see between 0 and pi over 3 as it's mentioned here. Between 0 and pi over 3, those were the x values. So if I go back to here and I change these to 0 and pi, uh, sorry, not pi over 3, 0 and root 3. Why did I say pi over 3? It's because it's written here. 0 and root 3. Okay, we have to change that in terms of t now. Okay, 0 and root 3. That's the original limits. Now we've got to write the limits in terms of t. Okay, and we've also got to write y in terms of t. And we got to also multiply by dx dt and then integrate that with respect to t. And hopefully when, we, when we've got this ready to integrate, it should look like this in the end. Okay, that's how it should look. So now we've got to go about changing things. So let's see. We've got the volume is equal to pi times. And we're going to have y squared. Now y is 2 sine squared t. So this is going to be 2 times sine squared t squared. And then we're going to have that multiplied by dx dt. Now I know x equals tan t and dx dt we should know and which is also in the formula book that the differential of tan of func of of some something is equal to the secant squared of that same angle so the tan of an angle if you differentiate that gives you the secant squared of that same angle so i can replace the dx dt with secant squared t and then that has to be integrated with respect to t now i've got to make my limits into in terms of t as well so I know when x equals 0, when x equals 0, then I know that that means tan t equals 0. Tan t equals 0, that means t is equal to 0. So that's going to be 0. And when x equals the square root of 3, then we got the tan of t equals the square root of 3. So t equals, now we need to find inverse tan of root 3. So we can take our calculator. And we press, make sure we're in radian mode. So change it to radian mode. And press inverse tan of the square root of 3. I think that's going to give us pi over 3. Yep, a third pi, pi over 3. So t equals pi over 3. So these are our limits. Now, what we have here does not look remotely like that. Some, I guess you've got a sine squared there, but this is going to be something we have to now manipulate and um, use some identities in order to change it to look like the way this looks. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the following. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, this and just, first of all, I'll square this bracket. So this is pi times, let me make a bit more space. This is pi times, don't forget the pi, pi is very important there. Very often in these volumes of revolution questions, the pi gets lost somewhere on the way. So be very careful about that. We've got to square everything inside this. So it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4, and sine squared t squared, which is sine to the power 4 t. Okay, times secant squared t. What I'm going to do with the secant squared t, I'm going to write it as, we know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so the secant squared of t is the same as 1 over the cosine squared of t, so I'll write this as 4 sine to the power 40 over cosine squared t, and that is integrated with respect to t, but we have to make sure that in the end we look, we get something that looks like this. I'm going to take this and just write it on the side here so we can see our goal what we have to aim for. We have to aim for it to look like this in the end. Okay, that's what we have to try to get it to become. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take out the 4. So I've got 4 pi, which is what we got there, which is good. I've got my limits, which are 0 and pi over 3, which are good. Now, this has got, these are squared and squared. This is to the power of 4. 
right? And I know we'll have an identity that ta the tan of theta is sine theta over cosine theta. So the tan squared of t would be the same as sine squared of t over cosine squared of t. And I can see that if I split this into sine squared of t times the sine squared of t, this can be over cosine squared of t. Then this gives us tan squared t times sine squared t. Now, it looks like at first sight, and many students will probably think when they get to this stage, that there's something wrong. Because this says tan squared t times sine squared t with respect to t. And this says tan squared t minus sine squared t. And many, many students will think, oh, hold on, I must have done something wrong. Because how can these two be the same? One of them, you're multiplying them together, and the other one, you're subtracting them. How is it possible that they can be the same thing? How can I make this become that? Now, many students would stop there, and they're like, all right, I've done something wrong. Let's go back or give up, go to the next part of the question, and just you know continue on without making this look like that. Now, if you've done nothing wrong until this point, and everything you've done makes sense mathematically, then you should continue until you reach to this stage. You should continue until you reach that stage because that means, you know, if you've done nothing wrong up to now, this definitely will become that, okay? So I'm just going to move over to the next page with this and we'll continue there. Okay, so we have to make this become like, as we said, okay, as we mentioned, we have to make it look like this over here. That's what we have to do. Let me just get my pen sorted out. Okay. So now, how on earth is this going to become looking like that? Well, as I said, if you've done nothing wrong, there's nothing to worry about. You can just carry on just doing what seems sensible. Now, here I've got tan squared t minus sine squared t. Here I've got tan squared t times sine squared t. Now, I know that I have an identity that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the same angle equals 1. So I can take my sine squared of an angle and express it as 1 minus cosine squared of the same angle. And there there will be like a minus sign kind of added here. So that might help us. So let's see if that works. So 4 pi, you got 0, and pi over 3. And here I've got tan squared t times 1 minus cosine squared t with respect to t. Now, if I expand this, I'll have that minus sign and see, let's see what happens after that. So 4 pi, 0 pi over 3, and that gives us tan squared t minus tan squared t times cosine squared t. Integrate with respect to t. Now, it's not quite the same as that. However, we also know that the tan of an angle will give you the same answer as the sine of the same angle divided by the cosine of that same angle. So if I can rewrite tan squared t as sine squared t over cosine squared t, then I'll have my answer because the cosine squared t's will cancel out, leaving us with sine squared t at that place, and we're, we're done. So the next step, couple of steps here, just simply replace the tan squared t over here with sine squared t over cosine squared t. I need this already as tan squared t as, as is mentioned in the question. I'm not going to mess with this one. I'll change this one into sine squared t over cosine squared t. That's multiplied by cosine squared t. And you can see they cancel out, leaving you with exactly what is required for us to show, which is 4 pi times zero well times the integral between the limits of zero and pi over three of tan squared t minus sine squared t with respect to t so that's very okay important for us to not give up when we get to this stage which i'm sure many students did all right but carry on going and just think logically i need a minus sign there how am i getting a minus sign changes to one minus cosine squared theta then everything works out fine Okay, so that's part A of this question. Okay, and you can see that what we've shown is exactly what we have to show. You can compare them and see that they're exactly the same. Okay, so now part B of this question is actually related to um, P. 
P3 more than P4. So the first part of this question is related more to P4, which was to do with um, volumes of revolution, revolution and also parametric equations and preparing something for integration. So the next part of this question is actually how to integrate um, tan squared t and minus sine squared t. Okay, so I'm going to make that in a separate video, which the link for which will be on here, um, somewhere up here at the end of this video. And that video will be where I go through how to actually integrate this and find its value, because that's more related to P3 integral of these trig functions using some of the identities. So I'll save that in a separate video so I can then save that in the playlist also for P3. And um, this will be in the playlist for P4. And they'll both be in the playlist for this particular paper of June 2014 together. All right, so I think that would be more sensible for me to do that. So if you click on this link at the top over here, or maybe over here at the end of the video, you'll find a link taking you to part B of the question. So thank you for watching.